What's the story, Morning Glory? What's the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of 90 Day Fiance Season 9, Episode 16, Shaida and Bilal. So we see Shaida, Bilal, the kids are all at home together and Bilal is having a conversation with his daughter. And the daughter is saying that, you know, I guess her and her brother are getting used to Shaida being there at their father's house. And the daughter says that, you know, if, if her dad's happy, she's happy. And if it's good for her, if it's good for him, it's good for her. And that was just a really beautiful moment because whenever there's children involved, I'm always hoping and praying that the kids are comfortable with the decisions that their parents have made as far as who their parents have chosen to marry and to bring into their children's lives. So this conversation kind of reassures me that the kids are perfectly okay with Shaida and that I'm glad that they're comfortable with her. And now, you know, we can move forward because if your kids aren't feeling your partner, I don't think you really, you know, I think you're in for a very bumpy ride, but moving on from there. So then it's time for Bilal's sister to show Shaida the wedding gown. Okay. So she plays this prank on her, shows her a fake wedding dress. Ha ha ha, whatever. Let's get over that. So the actual dress that she presents to Shaida, it's a very beautiful dress. I can't believe this woman made this with her own hands, but it's a very beautiful dress. Shaida is very pleased with it. It's modest, but it's going to be somewhat form fitting so she can still show her femininity, show some sexiness on her wedding day. So Shaida is very happy with the gown. And I think that for the sister to make her wedding gown and to make it as good as she did, I mean, that just speaks volume right there. And then we see Shaida at the nail shop with her sisters, her two sisters, her two youngest sisters. They will be attending her wedding. The older sisters will not be able to attend because they're still in Trinidad and the borders are closed again, I'm assuming due to the pandemic. But the two younger sisters, they were already in America. I think they're going to school in the United States. And so it wasn't much for them to come down and be there for the wedding. Now they're in the nail salon getting their nails done and they're having a conversation about obviously the wedding and Bilal, etc. The two sisters express that they're not really that crazy about Shaida marrying Bilal. Um, they don't have a very high opinion about American men. They say that they see American men as very cocky, arrogant, self-centered, etc. And I think that's kind of like the, the consensus that the rest of the world has on Americans in general. So I wasn't surprised that they said that, but Bilal is a lot of that stuff. He really is. And so Shaida says that she didn't know how strong his personality was going to be until, you know, she, did, she came and met him and moved in with him for this marriage to work. I guess Shida's going to have to follow her mother-in-law's advice, which is, you know, make him think that he's making all the decisions, make him think that he's the head of the household, but you're just going to be controlling things from the background. And if Shida can do that seamlessly without him knowing that that's being done, then maybe there's hope. But if Shida, you know, fights back with Bilal or if Shida tries to take over, I don't think Bilal's going to stand for that. I think Bilal, he's just... He just has to be the one to have things and to, to make sure that everything is under his control. He just wants to be, you know, the one that's making all the decisions. And y'all, I don't know. I, I feel like Shada could have done better. I feel like Shada could have done so much better than Bilal. But hey, this is the man that she chose. And this is what we have to work with. But her sisters are not that crazy about it. Then they talk about their prenuptial agreement. Um, they're not happy that she has to sign one, but she does reassure her sisters that I was able to include that he has to help me with my, um, yoga studio, which is fine. We all know that he was going to help you. He has no choice, but to help you because how can he be married to you and not help you start your business? What is he going to do? Just sit back and watch you struggle to get the capital that you need to start your yoga studio. No, he has to be involved and he has to help you start it. But my question is what happens with the proceeds? I guess it's going to be since y'all are married and the shop, the yoga studio, yoga studio is going to be operating, you know, within your marriage. I guess the profits are going to be both of your, both of yours, but does the prenuptial agreement talk about what happens to the business, to the profits, if anything should happen when you're divorced? That's what I want to know. Are you going to be able to take your studio a hundred percent, own it 100%, be 100% under Shaida's name, or is it going to be, you're going to have to buy, buy him out. That's what I want to know. You're going to have to buy him out. 
who knows? So, and then she also says that um, the thing about having children is also included in the prenuptial agreement that they will try to have children. Um, they can start trying or they should have a child or whatever before she turns 40. So they're okay with that. Um, I want to, and then Shaida talks about how, you know, she's going to read the prenup. She doesn't like to read, but she will take the time to go through the prenup uh, to make sure that he hasn't changed anything else, that what they agree to is what's memorialized in that prenuptial agreement. And he hasn't done the old switcheroo on her. So the sisters are like, yes, please girl, read that damn prenup before you get married, read it over with a fine tooth comb. In fact, why don't you send a copy to your attorney tonight? Shaida, tonight, send a copy to your attorney and have him look it over and tell your attorney, look, once you look it over, I don't care what time of day, morning or night it is, call me and let me know if it is on the up and up, if it's good to go, just whatever. I don't care if it's three o'clock in the morning over here, call me and let me know that that prenup is on the up and up so I can feel comfortable walking down that aisle uh, and getting married to Bilal the next day or whenever they're supposed to get married. Shayda, please have your attorney look over that prenup. Don't just read it over yourself. Please have your attorney look it over. You still have a little bit of time. So am I, how do I feel about Shayda and Bilal getting married? Um, someone I said in my comments, I forgot your name, love. I'm sorry. But they had seen Shayda and Bilal on a panel and, you know, way after they were done recording the show and they looked to be happy and love getting along well. So, I hope so, because there's children involved. So I want them to be happy together. I want it to work out between them. I don't need them to be turning these kids' lives upside down because, you know, of the mistakes that they've made or because they can't get along. So maybe now that she's actually married, you know, she's gotten what she wanted out of this, that um, Shaida is a whole lot happier. And if she's happy, I know Bilal is happy. Um, Bilal says a lot of things that sound really, really good. Like he talks about how, I like it when he talks about how he loves her, how he cares for her. Um, I like it when he talks about how he doesn't want to end the relationship. He doesn't want her to break up with him or to go back to Trinidad. He wants her to stay here. Um, I, I like hearing him say that. Um, because then I'm beginning to see, like, it, it helps me understand that he does have true feelings for her, that he's just not looking for a wife just to have a wife because, you know, he feels like he needs a wife, but he really wants Shaida, not just a wife, but he really wants Shaida. And, uh, when he talks about caring for her and providing for her, I like to hear stuff like that from Bilal. And I hope that this is a good union. I hope that they are really happy with one another. Um, when they do have their romantic times, like when they're on the gondola before, you know, it turned bad when they were in, um, I don't know, whatever city that their sister was in and they were on the Ferris wheel, you know, it was romantic and beautiful before he brought up the prenup. So I like those moments when they are clicking, when they are getting along, when there is that love between them. And hopefully the rest of their marriage will be like that. Now that we got the prenup situation out of the way, they've decided to move forward with the wedding. The children are accepting of her as she is of them. He agrees to have a family with her. So it seems like everything has fallen in line for Shahid and Bilal. And um, I would like to see them again on 90 Day Fiance, Happily Ever After. I want to see how things are, you know, once they are married. I can't wait to see that. And I hope that they do come back. I know it's a lot to have your life presented to the whole entire world and to have a camera crew living in your home, you know, for however many hours a day. I know it's really, really difficult, but I really would love to see Shahid and Bilal in the aftermath and see how things are with them, you know, after they said I do. That is my review of Married at First Sight, Shahid and Bilal. I really do appreciate you joining me on your way out. Please don't forget to rate the video. If you like this content, please subscribe and I will definitely talk to you later. Bye.